Hi, my name is Michael and welcome to Insight 365. Security and by extension data security is a hot topic these days and not in the least because of all the data breaches that have hit the news recently, but also because legislation is taking an increased interest in data security and is coming up with new ways of forcing organizations to rethink how they do data security. There isn't a single thing that you can do to increase your security tenure. It's a multi-layered approach where different pieces of technology can help cover different angles of attack. Azure Information Protection is one of these technologies that can help you secure your data inside but also outside of your organization. So, what is Azure Information Protection? To understand what AIP is, we need to understand where it came from. AIP finds its origins in ADRMS or Active Directory Rights Management Services. It's a different way to apply permissions onto a file rather than securing the container, which is what we've traditionally done. Right? In a traditional approach, the container being a file server or a SharePoint website or anything else is what we secure through an access control list, which controls who can enter the container and therefore access the data within. RMS takes a little different approach where it takes the permissions called writes and stamps them onto an encrypted document and they travel together all the time, which means that regardless of the location, the permissions that define who can do what with a file is always with the document itself. So what happens when I get an RMS protected document, right? My client opens up the documents, sees that specific rights have been applied, and then reaches out to the RMS cluster in order to validate the rights that have been defined on the document. If my permissions have been um, cleared, then the document opens with the specific rights that have been assigned to me. Rights could be I can open and edit the file, but not print the document. And my client will then enforce those permissions onto that file, which means I can do anything with it except print. That is a very flexible way, much more flexible than um, securing the container, but it also ensures that the data is secure regardless of its location, whether it's in that container or something outside of your control, like a OneDrive or a Dropbox. Because of how ADRMS works, there are certain restrictions to what we can do with the system, especially in an on-premises environment. For instance, to validate the rights, we needed a user account that connects to the RMS cluster to verify the rights. This is great when you work inside the organization, but once you start sharing files with external parties, that becomes less flexible because you need a user account for all these uh, users that connect from outside your organization, plus it meant exposing the RMS cluster to the internet. This is where the cloud, Azure AD RMS, came in to solve some of these problems. So ADRMS became AADRMS, and then AADRMS translated or evolved into Azure Information Protection. The way it works, the way Azure Information Protection works is largely the same as ADRMS. In fact, the protection is based on Active Directory RMS or Azure Active Directory RMS. It's just how we apply the, uh, the protection on document that changed a little bit. Instead of selecting the actual rights management template or defining the rights directly onto the document, something which you can still do today, we now apply a label which then classifies a document in a certain way. That classification or that label is tied to a specific AIP policy which will apply a visual marker, if you will, and apply a rights protection um, a template to that document. So classification in itself is the centerpiece of how AIP works. There's two ways of doing classification. Manual classification, which is part of AIP plan one, and automatic classification, which is part of AIP plan two. Which means manual, I select a label from my AIP client, there is a classification applied to the document, and then the rights applied to, or tied to that label are applied to that content. Automatic classification works by scanning the document, looking inside the document and finding specific criteria which then automatically classify the document in a certain way. That automatic classification is great, but it works best with structured data. If you work with unstructured data, for instance, you know, if all of your documents are different, it becomes a little bit more challenging but for specific organizations that have specific forms that look in a certain way, or they have very recognizable patterns of, of data inside a document, the automatic classification is perfect. 
Classification itself isn't really new, and AIP isn't the only system that does classification, except for third-party vendors or third-party solutions that also use classification. Inside Office 365, you also have labels in Office 365 called sensitivity labels, which can be used to, uh, for instance, define a retention policy or a retention period for specific data in Office 365. Now, for a long time, the labels in Office 365 and the labels that existed in AIP were not tied together. Luckily, Microsoft understood that maintaining these two separate systems without a link is really hard, especially because a lot of organizations try and use as many online services and combine them into newer solutions. So this is why a couple of months ago, Microsoft started rolling out these unified labels. What it actually does is take the Office 365 labels and the AIP labels and then merge them into what they call unified labels that you can manage from the Security and Compliance Center. Today, if you go into the Security and Compliance Center, you create a unified label, it will automatically carry forward into Azure Information Protection where you can use it in a more traditional AIP way. On the other hand, if you already had labels in AIP, you can migrate them into the Security and Compliance Center so that you can use the same labels in Office 365 as well. Now, where does this come from? What is the benefit, right? Today, if we look at AIP, you need to install an AIP client or your client needs to be AIP capable in order to apply the policies and the, the rights templates that have been created in AIP. The same is true in Office 365 because the labels are only exposed within Office 365. So it's useful for everything that you do in Office 365, but once you start going outside of Office 365, for instance, if you want to secure a PDF file or if you want to secure any other data, it's on your file server, you can't really use the Office 365 labels. By bringing both of them together, you get the best of both worlds plus a single management pane um, in order to manage both um, capabilities rather than having to maintain your Office 365 label specifically in Office 365 and your AIP labels specifically in AIP. So the future for unified labels really looks great, but is that the true value? I don't think so. I think AIP is is going much further than that, especially with the integration and in other Windows capabilities like Windows Defender ATP, the analytics that you have, and so forth and so on. There's always been some sort of integration within, between RMS and other workloads, like you had integrated rights management in Exchange and SharePoint, where you could automatically apply specific rights management templates. But integrating AIP with Defender ATP, for instance, now gives you an additional layer of intelligence, where by the state of the device, you can start securing content or prevent content from being used on an insecure device or you know, by using the metrics from Windows Information Protection and Defender ATP, you can track who's, going, who's using AIP protected content and where, and then use that telemetry, telemetry sorry, to um, come up with new use cases. Then if you integrate that with Cloud App Security, you can now go even further than that and restrict access from specific devices based on its conditions, on how they're being used, whether or not they've been breached and so forth and so on. So looking at where we came from with RMS, ADRMS that is, where you had templates that you had to apply manually to Azure Information Protection, where you can apply a label or classify a document either manually or automatically over to the unified experience where you no longer will have to install a client on your own machine anymore because it's integrated in the Office client and integrated in Office 365. It will then also integrate with other capabilities on your machine like Defender ATP and use that collective intelligence telemetry to more intelligently um, secure your data. So this is just a high level overview of what Azure Information Protection is and there's a lot of things that we can do. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, I'll dive into each of these capabilities and give a little bit more information about how they work, how to set up and what to uh, watch out for. So if you like this video, click the like button below, subscribe to my channel to get notified whenever there's new uh, content. I thank you for watching and see you next time.